So have you been driving around your neighborhood, your town, your city, whatever, and you notice all the signs that are up? Need help? Apply now. Sign on bonuses. The whole nine yards. Can small businesses really survive 2021? Is it even possible? They can't find people to work. I'm going to show you here in a few minutes of some of the things that are going on in this country that is just asinine that the way that the whole government has been doing things, the way they handed out all this money and everything else, and now you can't get people to go to work. And how does that affect us as preppers or as a prepper? What happens if you do work for a small business? A lot of people do. You rely on that job. And now maybe it could be in jeopardy. And then what do you do? Are you prepped enough and are ready for the upcoming storm of this economic disaster that we are in? You want to pay people more money to set a home than go to work. It just doesn't make sense, folks. The whole system is just, it's rigged. I don't understand what the reasoning is. When the pandemic was going on, yes, this was a totally fine thing to do because people couldn't work because of the pandemic. And most of their jobs closed because, well, the cities and states and everything else closed everything down. So now that everything is reopening, why is the money still being put out there for them to just to sit on their butts and not have to go to work because they're making more money setting a home? So in this video, I'm going to show you some articles and stuff. And let's see if we can delve into this whole situation of can small businesses survive 2021? And what does that mean for the rest of us? Because this world is basically built on small businesses. I'm not worried about all the large businesses and everything else. They'll survive and they'll get plenty of government handouts to make sure they survive. Because that's just what the government does. They want to take care of the top 1% and everybody else. Well, guess what? You're just at the end of the food chain. You get what crumbs are left, which is very little, if any, at all. So come along with me and we're going to look at some articles here and we're going to discuss what is really going on so you people all can see it for your own eyes. You might not believe some of this. So stay tuned. Here we go. So the question still stands, folks. Can small businesses survive 2021? Will they actually make it through 2021? I'm not worried about the big businesses as I did say before, but we're starting off right here. Uneven recovery. 35% of all small businesses might not survive this summer, the survey finds. It's just a fact. We can drive around town. You can see all the signs. People are offering sign-on bonuses and everything else. Small businesses hike pay, struggle to hire workers, economic booms. You know, I mean, everything is opening back up. Everything is going the way it's supposed to be going. We're going in the right direction, you could say. All right. As far as jobs go. But nobody wants to work. So if the employers can't find the employees to do the jobs and pay them a fair wage, they're going to have to close. They have no, there's, there's nothing they can do. They can't open a business without having people there to work. You know, one or two people can't run a whole establishment, especially it's a very well establishment. Record high number of U.S. small businesses can't fill job openings. This is just one after the other. How North Carolina businesses can address a shortage of workers. You know, small businesses weighed in on $15 an hour minimum wage. And here's what they said. You know, you got so many places that just want to raise the price to 15 bucks an hour. But in the end, I mean, can they really afford that? You know, it should be a step up or something to give at least the small businesses a chance. Now, has anybody been out to dinner? Have you noticed the prices of everything that's gone up? If you go out to dinner and things, everything is going up in prices because they all have to pay 
for these higher minimum wages. Now, you have a lot of companies that have starting to switch to IE. So what they're doing is, is they're having robots, machines, whatever else, take your order, give you your order, whatever it may be, to offset this whole problem. Got to figure. It's a lot more reliable than most people going to work. It's a lot more reliable. You don't have to pay benefits. You don't have to pay vacation. You don't have to pay him $15 an hour. Yes, you probably fork out a pretty good chunk of change for those type of IE type robots or whatever they may be. And all these different machines that will take orders and do everything else, process everything, you're taking away a job at a business. So, I mean, as a small business, if that's something you can afford to do, could be something good to go. Following April surge, small business gr job growth holds pace in May. You know, I mean, there's tons of jobs out there. Now, let's talk about something a little bit more. Um, this guy here, he is a um, economist, Mr. Summers here. He said in a recent Bloomberg interview, which was highlighted in a recent National Federation of Independent Business survey, you can see that in small business surveys, where we're at record levels in the terms of difficulties of finding labor. You can see that in terms of the data on the job vacancies, which are near record levels. A former president of the Harvard University, that is Mr. Summers, when Summers was asked if the government went too far in its latest relief packages, which I believe they did, which included supplemental unemployment benefits, which in many cases resulted in Americans receiving more income by not working, he did not hesitate to answer. And this is what he said. Yes, responded Summers. If we give people more money for not working, than they were getting when they were working. Then they are going to stay on the sidelines. Basically, they're going to sit at home because they're making more money eating bonbons and watching TV than they are going back to work, which in the long run is going to hurt them. It hurts us and it hurts society as a whole. Because you see in all your small towns and especially in your small towns and stuff, if all your small businesses and everything start closing up, well, what do you have, folks? A ghost town. And what good is a ghost town if there's nobody there? Can't scare anybody. You know, I made a little fun there. But in all reality, this is cold hard truth. This isn't something really to joke about. And then we throw on top of that with everything else that is going on, okay? As we're going to look at right here. All right. Jobs are there. Workers aren't. Cypress restaurant opening delayed six weeks and counting due to worker shortage. Restaurants are struggling to find workers despite rising wages, offering bonuses. Now they, now they got to pay people to come in and apply to get a job. Now we're getting into the food part of this. OK, there's a huge chicken shortage going throughout this country. All right. Chicken wing shortage, Colorado restaurants faces temporary closure due to limited supply. You know, restaurants nationwide rising prices amid soaring costs and labor shortages because everything is going up, not just the meat prices, folks, but the vegetable prices, everything that they need between the meat, the dry goods, the produce and everything else is all rising and it's killing off the small business guy. Now, I made a delivery the other day. I am a delivery driver. I delivered to a restaurant the other day, a major chain restaurant. I'm going to name names. But they did have a big, huge sign right on their front door. And it did state that some things on the menu were not available due to the recent meat shortages. So what does that tell you, folks? You have the government that's telling us one thing. And you have corporations that are telling us something different because they're the ones that are actually out there living the true life instead of the government where they're just sitting behind a desk pushing a pencil. 
I didn't get a chance to talk to the manager because he was busy, but I was curious, and if I do get the chance, I'm going to ask exactly what kind of meat he is being short on. Is it chicken, pork, beef, or all three? Because all three have been affected through this whole, between the pandemic, between the cyber attacks, and everything else, it's all having a, it's all part of a chain reaction event. And it's going to affect us. There's a lot of things that we can control. There's a lot of things we can't control. And being prepared and being prepped and ready, because could come a day where you may not be able to go out to eat because there just ain't gonna be any place there. And what happens if these meat shortages do continue? And what happens you figure chicken is the cheapest thing you can buy right now at the grocery store. And if that starts to become a shortage because everybody's buying chicken because that's what they can afford. Well, where's that going to put? Going to put us in a bad place. So that's why you want to make sure that you're prepped and ready. All your supplies that you may need in an emergency type situation. Want to make sure that you are doing your best to support any of your local businesses and the small businesses. You know, the small guy is the one that's always there. He's always open. And it's always that hometown atmosphere that makes you feel so good when you go into a small business. So can these small businesses survive 2021? I sure hope so. I wish they would do away with the whole extra wages that they're giving these people considering that the economy seems to be doing well per the government and since that the job growth seems to be well and that all the jobs are out there they just don't have the people going back to work but would you go back to work if you're making more money setting a home than working probably not right since the day we live in. This isn't like 40 or 50 years ago where people actually had a work ethic and that they was really had a desire to go to work and work for what they got. Nowadays, everybody wants a handout and the handout is what's going to really kill us because it's costing us trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. One of those things, folks. And when people ask, well, you know, I just can't do this or I can't do that. I've got this, I've got that. And you know, the, the, everybody has excuses. Well, the excuses need to go away and people need to go back to work because they're going to be the first ones to turn around and complain that their favorite local restaurant is no longer there because there are nobody there to work. So I'm survival preparedness for beginners. I want everybody out there to thrive, to survive. I want you to be prepared. I want you to be informed on what is taking place because as these places start to disappear, you're going to know why it's because people just don't want to go to work. And it could be on the other side that the businesses just can't afford the prices of the inflation that is taking place in this country. And it's going to put the small guy, out of business in 2021. So you'll be left with your normal big chain stores. Don't worry, McDonald's will always be there for you if that's what you enjoy eating. Me and myself, I like to find myself a nice little restaurant in a small town. That's where you get your best food. Till next time, folks. Survival preparedness for beginners. Thrive to survive, keep prepping. Stay positive. Catch you all on the flip side.